Welcome to June's Leco Challenge. Today's problem is number of subarrays with bounded maximum. You are given an array nums of positive integers and two positive integers left and right. Left is less or equal to right. Return the number of contiguous, non-empty subarrays such that the value of the maximum array element in that subarray is at least left and at most right. The length of nums will be in the range of 1 to 50,000 and the numbers themselves will be 0 to uh, whatever, 10 to the 9th power. Now given this constraint here, the length of nums, at first it sounds like we can do a n squared solution by doing a nested for loop and checking every single contiguous subarray, keeping track of which, one's the, like, which value is the maximum. If the maximum is in range of left and right, then we can update our output. Uh, but we can kind of intuit here that there's probably a greedy approach keeping track of uh, some sort of information as we go along. Say that we want to solve this problem here, 2, 1, 4, 3. What are, what are our possible three subarrays? Well, you can see right here, it's either going to be 2 itself, it's going to be 2 and 1, or it's going to be 3. Notice how when we hit a number that's out of, out of range, or specifically greater than right, it almost wipes out everything that comes with before, and we kind of start over. It's almost like this is its own separate sub, like array. So surely there's some... Uh, Greedy, greedy, greedy approach that we can take here. So say that we uh, had just had this example. What information do we need to keep track of as we move along? Well, there's three possibilities for our numbers, right? It's either going to be less than left. It's going to be, you know, in range of left, like whatever, or it's going to be greater than right, right? And if it's greater than right, we kind of know wipe out everything, wipe out all info here. But if it's left less than left, what do we do? It, it kind of depends. Say that it's all ones at this point, and we have a left of two and a right of three, something like that. Like all these ones don't matter, but that's only because there's no numbers that are in range, or the, or the maximum number is not in range that comes before it. So we almost like need to keep track of that somewhere. Um, like if we find if it's less than left. But we, f we know that at, at some point before we found some numbers that are in range to say that we had a 2 here. We need to add, uh, we need to add however, however many numbers we've seen so far that have been in range. So if we had like 2, 2, 2 like this, like uh, once we reach run 1 here, we know we can do this, we can do this, we can do this, we can do this, right? So why don't we keep track of how many numbers that we've seen so far that are in range. Whenever we see a number that is outside of the bounds or it's greater than, greater than the right, then we'll just wipe it out because none of that matters anymore. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. So if we find like the in range and maybe we'll use a stack or something, then we'll uh, add whatever amount is inside of our stack. We can't add the number itself here but we can add, uh, as long as we include this number, we can add that. So one thing, yeah, so basically, um, as we move forward, like well, let's just say it's all ones. At this point, we can add uh, one, we can add one, we can add one, right? And the reason for that, actually, if you think about it is, uh, say that we had like two here, how many numbers can we add? We, well, if two was here, we can add, this, we can add this, we can add this, we can add this, we can add everything. So obviously uh, we realize here that index number actually needs to be taken care of. We have to keep track of the last index point that we've seen a number in bounds. And that way we could um, uh, subtract whatever numbers that come in between. So say this wasn't in here, then we'll subtract uh, two. Like if we're on one here, one here, we're gonna subtract two because these don't count but we could add two here and we can add whatever comes before that. All right, now if it's in bounds, um, we could definitely add itself, right? We can add itself and pretty much we can add everything that came before. So, okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna keep track of two things. We're gonna have a stack of the numbers that are less than left and we're gonna have a stack of the numbers uh, that are in bounds. And we're also going to keep track of um, the last index point that we've seen a number that's in bounds. 
So we'll have two stacks. One for in, uh, one for low range, and one for inbounds. We'll also have to keep track of the last index point that we've seen inbounds. Now, if we find that the number is greater than right, it's out. It's yeah. If it's, the max is out of bounds. It's greater than right. Then we have to just wipe out everything. Okay. So so that that much is simple. So let's start by actually just coding this out and we'll just build it up as we go. We're going to have a stack and we don't actually need to have a stack itself. We just need to keep track of how many numbers uh, that were in low range and how many numbers are in range. So uh, I'll call this, I don't know, L stack for low range and I stack for inbounds. We'll also keep track of our output, which is going to be zero as well as the last index point that we've seen a number in bounds. So I'll call that last i. And we'll start with like negative one. Okay, so for i n in enumerate nums, there's three possibilities. Now if i is less than left, else if i is, or I should say left, less or equal to i, less or equal to right, I'm sorry, it shouldn't be I, it should be N. And else, the only possibility is N is greater than right. That means we're going to wipe out our stacks. We're going to say L stack equals zero, and I stack inbound stack equals zero. And we're not going to add anything to our output, obviously. Okay, so if the number is less than our left, what do we remember? We have to remember that uh, it totally depends on whether we've seen a number inbound so far. So if it's less than left, and if we find that R, not R stack, if inbound stack is greater than zero, that means we've seen a number inbounds before. So let's add to our output then whatever our uh, I stack is plus whatever our L stack is. And remember, this keeps track of how many small numbers we've seen. Now, recall that I, I gave you that example. If, it, if we see like a one at this point um, and say that we had like two, 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 that's, it kind of depends on um, like any, if these were all ones, it doesn't actually really matter. Like none of this matters. We can still add all, all these numbers, right? That comes before. But if this was a one, we can't add that. Right, so basically we'll just add everything and then we'll subtract from the last index point this part right here. So to do that, all I have to do is say, okay, output minus equal um, this index point, whatever we're at, subtracted by the last index point that we've seen in inbounds, and we'll subtract one. Now that would be it. Uh, all we have to do now is that L stack, we'll add one here because this number counts as a low, low number stack. Okay, so if it's inbounds, that's fairly easy. All we have to do is add to our output the I stack plus L stack plus itself. And we'll increase our inbound stack by one. Finally, return the output. Oh, and one thing to note is each time we do this, we have to keep track of the last index which would equal i, because that's the last time we've seen this in bounds. All right, so uh, hopefully that made decent sense. Let's see if this works. And it's hard to know if it works until we submit it, so let's see. And there we go, that's accepted. Uh, time complexity is going to be O of n and constant space, because these are all just integers. Now, I looked at some of the solutions and found that this was actually pretty different from how other people did it. Lots of other people try to keep track of the left and right index points, kind of like a two-pointer. Uh, or they kept track of the midpoint, which was a little more mathematical than I um, uh, would have expected. This, I feel like, is more understandable. It's, it's not as clean, uh, but it's the one that I came up with. So I'm just going to explain this one. Uh, I don't know if it's good or the best or whatever, but I do know it's O of n and O of 1 constant space. So... Uh, even though it's not the most clever and clean, clever solution, like I think it's good enough.
all right thanks for watching my channel remember do not trust me i know nothing